This is the Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 coding challenge, Holographic Illusion. My name is Mr Lovegrove and I'm a computing teacher. I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own holographic illusion using P5.js, which is a JavaScript library language. And we're also going to use an API to build in some 3D shapes. So this is what we're going to code. On the screen here, you can see that we have made four rotating cubes that change color and that have yellow outlines. And then when you take the top of a bottle and turn it upside down and put it on the screen, you should be able to see floating in the bottleneck a holographic illusion of a cube. It's quite tricky to see on here, but it does really work. When you see the pause symbol, pause the video and implement what I've asked you to do. So to begin with, navigate to this website address. This is rpf.io forward slash p5.js. And this is on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website. Now, when the text editor first opens, you'll see in the top left hand corner, you've got your execute and stop buttons. And you'll see two functions that are, have already been placed in the code for you. The first is a setup function, and this runs just once when the execute button is pressed. And you can see that we have already created a canvas that is 400 by 400. And you've also got a draw function. Now this function is repeatedly called when the execute button is pressed. So when you add things in here, they'll happen again and again and again and again, which is really useful. Now the first thing we're going to do is change our canvas size to 600 by 600 to make it a little bit bigger. And then we're going to call upon the WebGL API. Now this is an API that allows us to draw 2D and 3D shapes. So I'm going to remove my semicolon and my bracket, and I'm going to put a comma in there. And then using all capital letters, I'm going to type in the phrase WebGL, which means I can now draw 2D and 3D shapes. I'm going to close that with a bracket and of course use a semicolon. Now, I'd also like to change the color of my background, which is currently 220. If you run that, it's actually gray. I want that to be displayed as black. So I'm going to change the color to zero. And now when you press the execute button, you'll see you have got a black background. So next I'm going to draw a box in the middle of my screen and I'm going to have that box translating. So there's a box above it, one below it, one to the left and one to the right. So I'm going to create a new line just underneath background. And to begin with, I'm going to push and I'm going to pop. So I've typed in those two words with open and close brackets and use my semicolon. Now, if you don't know what these mean in JavaScript, push is where we add items to the end of an array and pop is where we remove an item from the end. And in between my push and pop functions, I'm going to draw a new box that's got a size of 50, and I'm going to use my semicolon there. Now when I execute this script so far, you can see a white box in the middle of the screen that's got a size of 50. This is a good time to click on the auto refresh uh, checkbox there, which means when you make changes to this script, it will update live here along the right. So for instance, I could have a box the size of 100 and it will update and show me, but we're going to keep our box at the size of 50. Next, we're going to code this shape to appear at the top of the screen up here. And to do this, we're going to use the translate function. So after push, we're going to type in the word translate, and then we're going to enter two coordinates now, because I want this to be at the top, we're going to enter zero along the X and I'm going to separate that with a comma. And then I'm going to enter minus 200 along the Y, which will make my shape appear in the top of the screen. As you can see there, this box is a 3D shape. Next, I'm going to make this shape appear also on the left, at the bottom and on the right. And to do this, I'm going to copy my code between push and pop, and I'm going to paste it three more times below. 
and I'm just going to change those co coordinates and let's just make sure that our push site our push functions are nicely lined up so the first one I've got zero along the x and minus 200 along the y so for this next one I want to have it appearing at zero along the x and just 200 along the y which is right down the bottom of the screen um, these next ones this time I want to change the x value to 200 and make that appear at zero along the y and for the final one I want to have it appearing at minus 200 along the x and nothing along the y and you should have four boxes that appear at the top left bottom and right of your screen Next, I'm going to make these boxes, these cubes, rotate along the X, the Y and the Z axis because they're 3D shapes. And to do that, I'm going to have them following a variable and rotating when that variable changes. As you should know, a variable is something that stores something and it can be changed. So we're going to create a new variable under the setup function at the top. And this variable is going to be called angle and I'm going to set my angle to begin with to zero. That means that every time this script is started, angle resets to zero. And then underneath my draw function, so right at the very top, I'm going to have this variable increasing by 0 0.003 every time this function is called, and it's called repeatedly. So to do this, I'm going to type in angle. I'm then going to have this getting bigger by 0.003 every time this function is called. Now you won't be able to see this happening, but now when I execute my uh, program so far, my angles reset to zero and it's adding 0.003 to that variable every time that function is called. going to have these shapes rotating and to do that they're going to follow the angle variable which we have set up to change. Now I'm just going to separate my angle and background functions there to the functions that are drawing my four boxes and to do this underneath translate I'm going to use the rotate function so I'm going to have this rotating along the X to begin with, and it's important that you use a capital X, and I'm going to have that calling the angle variable. I'm going to copy this. As you can see there, it started to move along the X already and rotate. Of course, it's changing by 0 0.003 every time that the variable function, every time that function is called, which is repeatedly. I'm then going to have it, I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to have it also changing along the Y and along the Z. Now this of course is just changing this top shape, which is making it rotate. I'm going to copy those three lines of code and I'm going to add them underneath translate to my other shapes as well. There they are. And just because it's important to be neat when we're coding, we're going to make sure that those are all nicely in line. Now, what you should have now are four cubes that are rotating. And when I stop and start my script, they should all rotate at the same time. We're going to add some color to these rotating cubes, which will make them easier to see when you have a look at them using the uh, hologram lens you're going to make. And to do this, um, where we've got our draw function here and we're changing our variable angle and we've set our background to zero. Uh, to begin with, first of all, we're going to give this, uh, all of our shapes, a normal material. So I'm going to type that in with open and close brackets. I need nothing inside there, followed by a semicolon. I'm also going to give them a yellow outline or what's called a stroke. So I'm going to type in the word stroke, open up my brackets, use an apostrophe and type in yellow, close my brackets and use a semicolon. And then finally, I'm going to give that stroke a weight, which makes it a little bit bolder of three. 
So I'm going to type in stroke weight. Remembering we need capital letters uh, between stroke and weight because they're different words. Stroke weight, open up my bracket. It's going to give that the value of three. And I'm going to close my brackets and finish off with a semicolon. So now you have got rotating cubes that are nice and colorful with a yellow outline with a weight of three. Now take an empty and clean bottle and cut the top off. And then if you look through the bottleneck from the side, you should be able to see a small holographic illusion of a rotating cube. Email me a picture of your completed project and have a go if you want to at innovating and creating and see what else you can make using this code.